So kind of along the lines of um, the, the model, the celestial sphere that we talked about before, that actually is kind of helpful, the fact that we, if we think of the Earth being surrounded by stars that are imprinted um, on, a, on a whole of sphere, we call it the celestial sphere, um, kind of related to that, a um, long time ago, we used to uh, not understand the concept of a star, not understand the concept of, of our solar system, and we put the Earth at the center of our solar system, and we put all of the planets and the sun orbit the Earth, okay? Um, and the stars all orbit the Earth. And, and it kind of actually, you can see that motion. We know that's not the case, but that is called the, the a geocentric model. Geo meaning Earth, centric meaning middle, okay? So that's an example of the geocentric model. Um, the other, th and Plato and Aristotle were noted f uh, for subscribing to that model. The other thing, honestly, as we started to switch gears and understand that the, that the Earth isn't at the center of everything, and actually the Sun is at the center of our solar system, the Earth orbits the Sun, um, we have to actually also transition from um, this idea that, that, um, that, that nature is perfect. And I think nature is wonderful and beautiful, but I do not think nature is perfect. And with perfection before, and it's more of a mystic thing, not just a not just a God or Christianity thing, but uh, you know, nature is perfect. So um, instead of um, um, something a little more oblong, which is really the case, um, we were thinking that that orbits had to be spherical or circular. So. One of the things that um, if you put the Earth at the center and have the planets orbit the Earth and the sun orbit the Earth and the stars orbit the Earth, one of the things that doesn't make sense with the planets orbiting the Earth is the planets don't always go in one direction. So there's this thing, oh, by the way, if you print it off the slides, I'm going to have to go ahead and give this slide to you, so don't panic. I'll give it to you. But... Um, the planets don't always go the same motion. Um, as this is actually Mars against the background stars from what June to November, right? Several months, and this motion right here of Mars against the background stars actually um, is what we call direct. I'll put a D for direct, okay? Direct or regular motion. So that would be okay. So because Mars was orbiting the Earth, I know it doesn't. But what wasn't okay is what we call this retrograde motion. So we have June to July. Now this right here, July to August, September, this is retrograde. I'll put an R for retrograde. It's a backward motion against the background stars. And then beginning with September, we have the forward or direct motion. Okay, so direct motion here, okay. And this is the retrograde motion right here. So, um, you know, I give them credit because this was an observation of motion movement of the planet against the background stars. And they couldn't explain it with a geocentric model, okay? But the person who came closest to explaining it with still a geocentric model was Ptolemy. Now, when you pronounce Ptolemy's name, the P is silent, as I understand it, okay? So Ptolemy is his last name. We call it the Ptolemaic model. I'm going to show it to you here in a minute. And it basically tries to account for what we call retrograde motion of the planets. Okay. Um, so here's what Ptolemy did. Um, so this orange line you're going to see is actually the motion of the planet. Okay. You see the Earth here because it's a geocentric model. You see the Earth in the middle and the planet orbiting the Earth. Okay. Now, what Ptolemy did was to add what we call little, that little circle there is an epicycle. The little gray dot in the middle of the circle is an epicenter. And so you can actually see this would be the direct motion, okay? And as um, the planet gets to this point where it's going to do an epicycle, it actually, this would be the retrograde motion, okay? And then it begins direct motion again till its next epicycle. Okay. So what he did was basically introduce what I call like little loop-de-loos on the planet's orbits as the planets orbit the Earth. All right. 
Um, so what we run into is in science, the more complicated, I'm going to try to spell out key, K-I-S-S, -S, the more complicated your explanation is for your observations, you might want to rethink your explanation. Because a couple ways to think about it. One is you are trying probably to fit a, um, a square peg in a round hole, okay? Um, so something's not quite right, and it, the more complicated it gets. So um, if you're familiar with the acronym K K KISS, it stands for Keep It Simple Stupid, right? Um, so it, this is a complicated sort of little uh, thing that he introduced into his model. Um, into his theory of how things work. It's actually later on, I'm going to have a word for it called Occam's Razor. Keep it simple, stupid.